It's time for Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. Featuring Chicagoland's brightest jazz star. And now, your host, Barry Winograd. Hello, and welcome to Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. This is a show where we are able to bring to you some of the more invigorating, unique, diverse talents that make up the Chicago jazz scene. Uncle Izzy and I were recently getting ready for our annual Jazz Jamboree softball game when we started talking about composers and trumpet players and the name Scott Hall came up and we thought that would be perfect for right here on Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. Thank you. 
This is Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. We're enjoying the music of the Scott Hall Quartet today. Scott Hall, Tom Hipskin, Carl Monska, and Larry Kohut. So far, we've heard Cole Peanut Butter. We'll hear two more, we'll talk a little to Scott, and we'll be right back on Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. <laughs> Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree, Cable's newest home for music, conversation, and more. Join me, Barry Winograd, for a half hour of entertaining, educating, and exciting sounds of jazz for many of Chicagoland's finest practitioners. We'll listen, talk, and view with you an invigorating array of jazz cats of all generations. It's Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree on your local public access channel. Welcome back to Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. We're enjoying the music today of a wonderful quartet led by trumpeter Scott Hall, he being joined by Carl Motzke at the keyboards, bassist Larry Kohut, and Tom Hipskin, the drummer. Scott, welcome to Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. Thanks, Barry. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here. We've been uh, trying to get you here for a while. We finally did, and uh, in this hot month of August, you started out with a nice cold tune, didn't you? Yeah, cold peanut butter. Yeah. And I guess we're going to hear all originals from you today. Yeah, three originals. And that's great. And uh, we're going to talk about writing in a moment, but first I want to ask you, it seems as if uh, it's a little unusual in that you have a regular keyboard, bass, and drums with your trumpet in your mm -hmm. band, but it's a little unusual to have an organist playing. Is that something you planned on with Carl when you put the band together, or was it something that just came about? Yeah, Carl, um, Carl used the organ on a couple tunes on the CD. Um, it was at the, Carl just got a Hammond B3, and we brought it in the studio, we recorded, and uh, 
and it was the first time we recorded with it and all that. And I mm. uh, love the sound, and uh, we decided to use it exclusively for today's performance. So mm -hmm. I, I really dig the organ sound. When you were, you wrote all the songs on your compact disc, Strength in Numbers, yeah. which came out about a year ago now, yeah, I guess. About a year. Um, when you wrote all the songs for that, and when you write for your small group in general, do you think about that, that you use the sounds of the organ rather than a regular piano or a piano keyboard? Yeah, definitely. I mean, because uh, I had uh, talked to Carl about, hey, you know, I would like you to play organ on mm -hmm. some of these tunes. And, uh, and I was writing very specifically for that sound and also very specifically for each individual and how they play. Mm -hmm. Because it made, it made it easier for me to write the music because I knew exactly how they would play it. And it was just wonderful what they did with it. Well, you wear a number of hats as a musician. You're a teacher right. at a local university. You're a writer of music, as we know. You're a performer. Mm -hmm. uh, you're also a record label owner. Mm -hmm. And you have helped to uh, showcase a lot of wonderful musicians from the Chicago area on your record label as well as yourself. Mm -hmm. And some people may think that's a lot of hats to wear, but it's truly not unusual. It's something that... Many musicians, Carla Blay, Steve Swallow, Charles Mingus, have all done or had done throughout their careers. Why did you decide to become a record label owner and add all that misery <laughs> and pain to your I life? I didn't really know about all the misery, and, and uh, I'm here to tell you there is a lot of misery. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I just have a passion for uh, producing music, writing music, performing, and helping others do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like starting a label would be the only way to be able to continue my career as I grow and uh, always have the opportunity to, to uh, release music that I'm composing or other people are composing. Do you feel as a musician it's allowed you to uh, really express the music as you want it to be heard more so than if you had gone with another label? Well, I think, uh, I think down the road, I think it would have been more difficult to uh, to do things my own way. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly am that type of person. I like to have my ways of doing things. And, mm -hmm. and um, so it's been easier because of that. Well, you have a definite unique sound as a writer too. You won a, an award from, uh, was it Downbeat? Yeah. Or, as the Giant Steps uh, was the uh, arrangement you did for 16 piece uh, ensemble. Right. And what was the name of that award again? Uh, it was actually, I was in college at the time. It was the uh, Downbeat's, uh, uh, best college jazz band arrangement for you know, large year jazz of, ensemble. Uh, 1920 or something yeah, like 19, that. 19, yeah, 1915, <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. A few years back. Yeah, and uh, your your arrangements on your uh, recording strength and numbers and the ones uh -huh. that we're going to hear today I know are unique. They say to me, oh, this is somebody who has a certain identifiable sound. Right. Now, as a writer, I think you've expressed to me off the air, and I think it's an interesting uh, idea, concept, that jazz musicians also... Mm -hmm don't just write jazz, or they take their jazz to other venues, uh, mm -hmm. as Benny Carter has, Lenny Niehaus, and others into movies and places. Mm -hmm. Do you have any eyes for taking your music to other venues besides the typical jazz ensemble? Yeah, I, I hope to be able to uh, have the opportunities to, to write music for various ensembles on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. um, I actually do have a commission coming up for the fall for writing I'll be a featured trumpet soloist, and I'm going to write the music uh, backed by a symphony orchestra. And um, so I'm looking forward to opportunities like that. Well, I think it's wonderful. Those jazz musicians are unique in that they are able to stretch their music into other formats, more so it seems than other uh, forms of popular music. Yeah. Um, we're gonna hear two more songs written okay. by you. What are they? Uh, the first one is Moments of Momentum, mm -hmm. and uh, which you know is, is it's basically when I was writing the music for the album, uh, I needed momentum to keep things going because I wanted things to keep flowing, the, mm -hmm. the ideas. And so Momos of Momentum came up. And then uh, the other title is, uh, it's a fast modal tune. It's called Do Not Wet. And I've left out the, uh, the, the, uh, the subtitle, which is Self-Adhesive Stamps. I just thought it was so cool when they finally came out. Well, Do Not Wet is a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Scott, for being here and bringing your friends with you. Thank you. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing more music right now from Scott Hall's Quartet on Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree.
This is Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. We've been enjoying the music of Scott Hall Quartet. Trumpeter Scott Hall, keyboardist Carl Motzka, bassist Larry Kohut, and at the drum set, Tom Hipskin. We heard three original tunes today, Cold Peanut Butter, Moments of Momentum, and Do Not Wet. So until next time, support live jazz, and I'm Barry Winograd saying see you right here on Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. Thank you.